What's up everybody? I'm Nick with Mad for Multi Rotors, and today we finally got our hands on Fox Ear's new Legend 2 HD camera. We've been waiting on these things for going on five months now, and from what I understand, they finally got this thing perfected. Let's take a look at it, shall we? The Legend 2. Nicely packaged. Hard little cardboard box, pretty embossing. Flashy. We've got the instruction manual in both Chinese and English. I hate you, camera. Fairly straightforward and simple. I mean, compared to their last legend, which had kind of sketchy directions at the beginning, but whatever, looks good. Nicely packaged in this little foam here. Let's see. Yep, that's foam. It's not going anywhere. Now, this thing's a little bit shorter than the old legend, but the same width, same shape, same profile. Weighing in at 45 grams compared to Legend 1, which is 49, the Run Cam HD, which is 41, Mobius, which is 39 if you're old school, and the current GoPro Hero 3, not the 4, the 3 is 75 grams. So it, it's right there with the normal weight. Build quality is great, doesn't rattle, it's nice and solid. Um, plastic feels good, the buttons feel solid. I like the LED on the back, lets you see if you have it squished. It's got an HDMI out micro HDMI out, excuse me, and a micro USB port. It's got, it looks like several different microphones, and I can tell you from flying this thing, the quality is very nice. It's a 166 degree field of view lens, and a 12 megapixel image processor. But, let's finish the box before we get into the camera too much. Then, there's the accessories, which currently include some little fox ear straps and double-sided velcro. USB cable. A remote camera switch, which has not been developed too far yet, but it does exist. And of course, a hard plastic cradle mount for if you want to stick it on anything besides a quadcopter because this is awkward. Warm fitting, but awkward. And a lens cap. Anyway, back to the Fox here. They're a legend too. This is capable of doing ultra high definition at 24 FPS, 2K at 30 FPS, or 1080p at 60 FPS. These were supposed to be 1080 at 96 for the longest time, but for whatever reason it dropped off the radar and it quit happening. So it may come as a future update, but we don't know. As for updates, uh, there was a new one every four days, and then there was a new one every week or so, and then now they've kind of dropped off, but there is a new update for this, so when you get it, go ahead and update it to the newest firmware. It corrects a few color imaging problems, um, fixes a f uh, image flip problem, and there was something else about the Wi-Fi it updated. Speaking of, it does have built-in Wi-Fi, and when you turn this on, this one doesn't have a proper memory card. I don't think it can handle a 64, but it can handle a 32. You gotta hold it, comes on, and it does not start with the Wi-Fi on, which I like. So any of us that are flying FPV, okay, shut up, loud thing. Any of us that are flying FPV, you don't have to worry about turning the Wi-Fi on and off. All you do is press and hold the button for a few seconds and it'll change the blink pattern. It does start recording when you turn on the camera. Um, there was supposed to be an update that fixed that, but I've yet to figure it out. I'm still working on it. There is an app for this and it is a pretty decent looking app. I'm going to see if I can get my phone to do a screen recording. If I can, I'll show it to you guys. But the little app is actually pretty handy. It does a live view, lets you change all the settings, the color balance, the uh, recording modes, all that good stuff. And there is a PC app on the way. It was posted up on the Fox here page that the Wi-Fi failed on one guy's that was delivered and he had no way of changing the settings. So they are working on a PC app. I did manage to connect it to the old Legend 1 app, but that's not exactly what you're supposed to do, so don't bother trying it. Use the phone app. If your Wi-Fi doesn't work when you get it, hit up Surveil Zone or wherever the heck you got it from, Banggood. Get it replaced or contact Fox here directly. You can get it repaired. Now, I am going to use the raw video for these it's just so you guys can see the mic quality. I'm actually pretty impressed. I've got one of these mounted on my... Diatone ET160, and you can see there's no dampening on there whatsoever. It's just hard stuck to the top plate. And these cameras do have a built-in digital image stabilizer, which, again, is really freaking impressive because I haven't had any vibration problems. This thing is not <laughs> well-balanced, and it's very well beat up. 
but yet my images still came out clear and my audio still came out pretty clear. You have the ability to adjust it from high, medium, low, and it works really well. I mean, it's a great functioning camera. Like, it was well worth the wait. It functions well. It looks great. It's tough. You can see some bash marks where I had an electrical problem and it just dropped out of the sky. Um, but $99 and honestly worth every penny of all the little cameras that are out right now. This is definitely going to be a game, well, maybe not game changer, but it's light, it's functioning, it's sturdy, it looks pretty damn good. And I honestly like it. If you want a good camera for about 100 bucks, go pick one up. So when you open the app, the first thing you're going to do is connect to the Wi-Fi. It takes a minute to pop up, but there it is, Foxhare Cam. The password's in the little booklet it gives you. I believe it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It'll connect. <clears throat> Hop over to your Foxier app. And it'll show you the preview of the camera once it's connected. Yep, there I am. I was bored. Now the first button here would go through what's on the actual card. I don't know why it kicked me out. And this one shows you the quick selection for your resolution and frames per second. Then the actual settings menu shows you all the different resolutions and settings and changes and it's it's fairly in-depth and still quite intuitive but it's all there shows you firmware version battery level capacities etc and it does have a fine camera feature which is great i'm glad they included it but it only works if wi-fi is on the camera and you're connected which if you're flying fpv chances are you don't have it on because of interference problems with 2.4 signal but whatever <laughs> 